Hi, my name is Brett. My name is Eddie. And we are Two Set Violin. Violinist Brett Young and Eddie Chen met at a Met's tuition class in Brisbane, Australia when they were in their early teens. In 2013, they started making funny videos about classical music under the name Two Set Violin. Three years later, they gave up their jobs in orchestras to do live classical comedy acts that mix humour with violin recitals. Their YouTube channel has 4 million subscribers. Individual videos can chalk up millions of views. I'm Sumiko Tan, Executive Editor of The Straits Times. I'm meeting the two musicians at Changnan Jun at the Four Seasons ahead of their performance with the Singapore Symphony Orchestra in November 2022. Over Cantonese dishes, they tell me where they draw the line in their videos and why they took on the K-pop group Blackpink. How did the name Two Set come about? Honestly, we did not know why. Because like, we didn't think it would become a big thing, honestly. So we'll just try it. I remember back then, what was it? Two cellos. Mm -hmm. Two violins just sounds a bit lame, like it's like a copy paste. So our two set of violins. Okay, two set of violins. What was the story behind the Blackpink video you did? In YouTube culture, there's this thing called diss tracks. It's like a friendly thing. We've done it before with other musicians. So recently Blackpink came out with a song, Shut Down. It was weird because on one hand, it was kind of cool that they use Paganini or Campanella, which was Within the violin world, it's a pretty famous piece, um, but it's not the type of piece that you'd expect mainstream audiences to know. But on the other hand, it was kind of mixed feelings because the way they used the piece was kind of pretty artistically uninspiring, let's say. Like it was very, they turned such a great piece into one of the most monotonous sounding loops, just like they tuned it down, they processed it so it sounded like, a, almost sounded like a machine violin, and then it was just looping like half the sentence, right? So imagine Shakespeare, to be or not to be, that is the question. And they go, to be or not, to be or not, to be or not, just finish the sentence. Yeah, right? yeah. That's kind of, as a musician, that's how it felt. And then the other thing too was like, we noticed in the black pink world, the K-pop world, so many people didn't even know this was Paganini's music. A lot of people thought Blackpink wrote that violin music. So we're like, this is also a good opportunity to share with the broader world so they can educate um, about classical music. So we were thinking, the, how do we do it in a way that's more fun and creative? So we thought it would be funny if Paganini, who is the original composer, obviously he's dead, but we pretended to be Paganini, come alive. Um, he would make a diss track in response to Black pink. I don't understand. <sighs> Whose idea was it, the black pink video? It was mutual. Yeah. In the past, we've done just reaction videos, but like, we thought we wanted to do something that was a bit more inspiring, a bit more out there. We keep changing new things, the creative things that kind of pushes us creatively to do these things. Yeah. And I think a lot of pop music do reference classical music. Mm. Um, and they're kind of just like, sometimes it's just half sentences, to be or not, to be or not. We just had to make it. But where do you draw a line? Because in some of your videos, you are quite critical of, say, maybe not musicians, but um, maybe contestants in reality TV shows, oh, yeah. talent shows. I don't think we've ever insulted someone for the sake of insulting, right? Like, I don't think we've ever made a video where we're just like, haha, he's ugly. Like, we would never say that, which is <laughs> ironic because so many of the hate that we received are like, you guys are ugly, you guys are Asian ching chong, go eat a dog. <laughs> Usually when we're making videos, we're coming from a perspective of sharing the world of classical music. So we're educating about classical music, but in a fun, entertaining way. And so we add some comedy to it. And sometimes the comedy, there's a bit more spice to it and we, you know, we add a bit of roasting occasionally. Who's the better violinist? Oh, controversy. I don't know. I think we're about the same. I think we're about the same. We have different like strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. I don't know. It's actually. definitely better at staccato though. I can't do staccato. There's certain technical things he's really good at that I can't do. If there was one score, you would both play it differently? 
Yes, we will play a different. It would yeah. sound different. Yes, so 100% sound different. Really? Yeah,、oh. it could be the same piece. How does that come about? Okay, so that's a great question. I think people that don't learn classical music don't understand.、Um, they think we're all playing the same piece of music, right? But the best analogy I can think of is: imagine a script from a movie, but two different actors.、It、will be completely different, right? Imagine Inception played by Leonardo DiCaprio versus Inception played by Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. It、yeah. will feel very different, right? It's the same words, word to word. They're saying the same thing, but the enunciation, the tone of voice, the pacing, everything changes, right? That's so true. Yeah. So there's every note. There is so many decisions as to how do I begin the note. Do I go da 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 go wa wa? That's already different. Do I go da da or da da? Like even just two notes. There's so many combinations. Now you can think of an entire concerto. How you want to structure that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I learned something. What's the nicest thing, best thing you like about each other? Eddie's really open-minded, and he's also thinks really deep. So it's like it's not just one-dimensional. You think broad, but you also think depth. It's kind of that. That's what I think.、Mm. Brett has an amazing ability to kind of be in touch with people's feelings. I think. And he knows how to be considerate in such a situations. And one of the amazing things about Brett is he knows how to bring uncomfortable conversations up in a non-confrontational way. Thanks, bro. <laughs> Thanks very much for having lunch. Oh, oh thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah. Thanks for having us. There is a good way to do it, and there is bad way to do it. The biggest risk of being friendly is if you end up like attracting the terrible people, right? Like the thing with the crypto space is that it's very high variance.